Hi everybody, it's Carrie. Um, normally I would film like right after I get home from work or something like that when I'm more like fresh faced and ready to go and have an upbeat video, but honestly I just got done reading a book and I feel like I have to talk about it while I'm in the moment. It is 9.30 at night, so normally if I get done reading a book this early, for me it's early because it's a Saturday, I'd stay up till like midnight or one o'clock or whatever reading or watching Netflix or something but honestly I just finished this book uh, The House at Riverton by Kate Morton which I don't know if it's her first book or if it is her second book is relatively big this is 468 pages and it is just stuck me right through the heart and I am having a hard time articulating how I feel about this book right now. It is, like, very historical. It reminds me a lot of, like, Downton Abbey. And it reminds me of, if you've seen the movie Atonement with James McAvoy and Keira Knightley. Amazing movie, but tragic. It's got that same kind of feel to it, same kind of vibe. It's written in a way that you know the ending, you know the climax of the book. For the entire story. She mentions it right away. The main event is the death of a poet, the suicide of a poet at this fancy party at this house. And the only witnesses are the two daughters of the household and the one maid. And the entire story is told from the maid's point of view. Um, she is elderly. At the beginning of the story, when we're first introduced to her, she is recounting this many years later because they've decided to make a film out of this tragic event that has happened that she witnessed and she, as they're explaining things to her about the film she's reliving all the memories of what happened so it's it took a while for me to get into it I was very bored with it for like god this book took me like two three months to read which is horrible because it's only 468 pages but it took a long time for me to just like sit down and get into the story because it is kind of slow to begin with. You're learning the histories of the two daughters and the maid, you know, how they grew up, the different things that have affected the family and um, just how, how the whole thing gets set up because the two daughters grew up at the house and then the older of the two daughters gets married. She moves away with her husband Circumstances happen, and she ends up moving back to the house after the death of her father. And then that is where they're having this big sort of welcome back. Not like a welcome back, but like a... They're bringing back this tradition they used to have of this big summertime party. And at the party at the Bain house is where this suicide happens. So you know the entire book that it's coming. But, you know, 468 pages and the death happens at like page 460 or something like that, like way, way at the end of the book. Maybe I can find it quick. It's just, it has stuck me through the heart. I cannot get this out of my head. 460, actually it happens like two pages before the end of the book. So, I mean, we know the whole time it's gonna happen. 466, and the book ends on 468. So it is right at the end, but it's written in a way that this is the last thing that the maid is revealing about this story. They've made the film, they've ended it in the way that they think it happened, and she says, nope, it didn't happen that way, but she doesn't tell anybody that. She records it on this video cassette tape that she's been um, explaining. She's been reliving this. She's been dictating her story to, I think, her grandson. I'm not positive. Um, but she's been revealing the story to him, and that's the flashbacks that we get. And so we get to the end of it, and you find out that the film version has been ended one way, and then she is talking to her um, dictator, she's talking to her um, grandson through these cassette tapes that she's recording, that no, that's not what happened. And then you find out what actually happened, and it's just like, oh god. It's so hard to describe because you know the entire time that it's going to happen. You know it's coming. And it's still, the fact that it still gets you. 
oh my god. I had to film this in the moment because I'm just like, I can't read another book right now. I cannot pick an up pick up another book. I can't watch videos on my phone. I can't do anything happy right now because I'm stuck in this like tragic state of mind. And I'm just gonna have to sleep on it and start something new tomorrow. But I would still I would recommend the book because it is very it's very detailed. It it gives you a, such a clear picture of the time frame. It takes place the when the girls are growing up and the maid is younger that time period where the poet commits suicide uh, it takes place both during and after world war one so it starts in 1922 and ends with the party in 1924 and then we jump way ahead to the future when the maid is elderly and she's like a hundred something um so it is it is so no she can't be yeah, she's like 101 or something like that. It is so, so tragic. So, like, I'm stuck in that frame of mind right now. I'm stuck in the story. I can't get out of the story. Probably going to dream about it tonight. But I wanted to film this in the moment while I'm reacting to it as it happened. Oh, it shook me. And I feel like the only way you could experience this is if you read the entire thing and then you get up to that point because I can't say almost anything I can't explain anything about the characters I can't explain how they're related to each other or like how they interact with each other because it's gonna give away stuff you gotta read it and I'm sorry you have to read the whole first half of the book all the boring stuff with their history but to get to that end to get to those final like three pages. Just, oh, it is so good. So powerful. Good job, Kate Morton. If this is your first novel, you did it. You did it. Good job. Hope you enjoyed this review. I will talk to y'all later. Bye.